Hello, this is Sakamoto 3D1, and this is my Chivalry Medieval Warfare Weapon Guide. In this episode, we'll be looking at the first spear option available for the Vanguard class, the spear. Stab, stab, stab! The humble spear has been around longest out of all of Chivalry's weapons, with the first models dating back to prehistoric mankind tribes in Africa. Developed as a hunting tool, man soon brought it onto the battlefield. Throughout history, the spear has seen extensive use before being replaced by, before being replaced by the pike, lance, halberd, and so forth. However, despite this, it still remained a go-to choice for many soldiers and armies up until the invention of the musket. The spear in history had either stone or iron heads, and in some cases, the point was just a sharpened wooden tip, hardened by Length varied anywhere between 3 and 9 feet. The spear, like all vanguard weapons, has four attack types, rather than the standard three. The attacks are slash, performed by left clicking overhead before by rolling the mouse wheel down, and the stab, performed by rolling the mouse wheel up. The sprint attack is by sprinting and then attacking, doing massive amounts of damage without the ability to be reproduced. The slash attack deals blunt damage, which does limited, consistent damage to all classes. Against the archer, you will do 40 damage to the head, 32 to the body, and 26 to the legs. A maximum of 5 hits is required to kill the archer, which is an absurd amount, saying as it's the weakest class. When put up against the man at arms, you will do only 38 damage to the head, 30 to the body, and 24 to the legs. Maximum required kill hits remain the same. Against the vanguard class, you will deal 35 damage to the head. Against the body, you will deal 28 damage, and the legs take 22 damage. Again, 5 hits are required. When a knight is your target, the slash attack is clearly not your best choice. You shall deal 30 damage to the head, 24 to the body, and 18 to the legs. Against the knight, there is a 6 hit maximum kill, provided, of course, that all hits are to the legs. The LMB attack is best used as a last resort or against particularly weak enemies. The overhead attack deals pierce damage, which is particularly effective against heavily armored enemies. When attacking an archer with an overhead, you will do 79 damage to the head, 63 to the body, and 50 to the legs. The hits required to kill are reduced to 2. As with all pierce type damage weapons, the Vanguard and the Men at Arms receive the same amount of damage. They will both receive 70 damage to the head, 56 to the body, and 45 to the legs. This is the average damage done to the Men at Arms, but is remarkably high against the Vanguard. The Knight remains resistive to this attack, however. The Knight will take 44 damage to the head, 35 to the torso and arms, and 38 to the legs. The overhead is a much better choice than the slash. The stab attack also deals pierce damage, but holds a particular increase in reach, which is why I would recommend it. Against the archer, you will deal 68 damage to the head, 54 to the body, and 43 to the legs. The stab isn't the most useful against the archer, however, it could provide a reach benefit. Again, the man-at-arms and vanguard receive identical damage, average for the man-at-arms, but high for the vanguard. They both take 60 damage to the head, 48 to the body, and 38 to the legs. The knight, however, holds same resistive qualities as with the overhead. He will only deal 38 damage to the head, 30 to the body, and 40 to the legs. The sprint attack is a high damage attack, but lacks the ability to be reproduced regularly. It also does pierce damage. Against the archer, you will do 113 damage to the head, 90 to the body, and 73 to the legs. Not the highest potential for a one-hit kill, but remains powerful given the spear's speed and reach, and tackling archers should never really be a problem. When sprint attacking, you will deal equivalent damage to both the man-at-arms and the vanguard, being 100 damage to the head, 80 to the body, and 64 to the legs. This is high damage against both classes. Against the knight, you will only deal 63 damage to the head, 50 to the body, and 40 to the legs. However, given the quick recovery time of the spear, that shouldn't be a problem taking out knights, as long as they're not multiple. Although all around it does less damage than the greatsword, the spear also has remarkable reach as well as speed. This means you can finish off enemies quickly. Also, the sprint attack is very pinpointed, meaning that you hit your friends less and hit your enemies more. However, note, against multiple enemies, the spear does struggle as lacking a sweeping attack that does effective damage. The spear has trouble dealing with multiple enemies. It is the spear's speed and reach that is the design for this class. A class that will strike quickly, hoping to keep enemies just in reach your spear, but remaining out of reach of their weapons. In the primary slot, you will choose the spear. In the secondary slot, the War Axe will provide you the damage needed to quickly dispatch of your enemies when they happen to get too close to you. In the special slot, the Smoke Pot will help conceal your movements as well as when you're dancing around them, you can prick holes in them without them knowing where you are. That's our build, one that supports a mid-range melee engagement. Use your Smoke Pox wisely and stay away from multiple enemy encounters to use this weapon most effectively. With this long pointy weapon in your hands, the enemy will be left with more holes than they can count.